For millions of followers, right-wing groups in Europe offer hope and a promise of being part of a movement that listens and caters to their needs. Leaders of these groups make charismatic speeches filled with pathos and the idea that Europe and its people's survival is at stake. But what allows these groups to enjoy millions of people's hearts, ears and support? Two decades ago, only two European countries had right-leaning populist parties in government. This was Slovakia and Switzerland. Today, 11 countries do, and right-wing parties are continuing to grow in countries like France and Germany. Reasons for this rising popularity of these groups vary from economic recession to rising immigration from class divisions to a deaf government that does not listen to its people. However, theorists argue that it is not a single one of these reasons, but rather it is all of them compounded and perpetuating one another. To start off, let's unpack the economic-based explanation. Neoliberal ideologies of consumerism, competition, Privatisation and financial deregulation have led to Europeans turning to a political alternative. These policies have led to a rise in housing costs, deteriorating wages, disempowerment and dissatisfaction. In the neoliberal economy, constant threats of relocation and job loss have heightened the fear of losing livelihoods and the material conditions necessary for substantial quality of life. This fear is then invoked and captured by right-wing groups who promise to soothe this through directing it towards specific targets, including the EU, migrants and traditional political parties. However, the economic explanation must be accompanied by other factors, one of these factors is the rise in immigration which causes concerns about possible future job loss and threats to national security. Canadian author and former politician Michael Ignatieff suggests that this kind of politics needs an enemy and if they don't have one, they create one. This allows these right-wing groups to mobilize their political base. Migrants and refugees have most certainly become the targets of this, as many right-wing supporters feel that their national identity, safety and economic security are under threat. Despite the tenuous link between immigration and the decline of economic stability or national security, right-wing groups continue to incite, invoke and summon such fears in their supporters. It seems that the clearest response to immigration from right-wing groups is a call to strengthen national identity and to frame migrants and refugees as the other. These feelings about economic uncertainty and a fear of immigration is then further perpetuated by the feeling that traditional political parties are unwilling to listen to their people and change the state of affairs. This paves the path for right-wing groups to capture the political imagination of their supporters. Right-wing groups often capitalize on the idea that modern politicians look out for the rich and powerful and that these groups are of the people, for the people. It is through this that these groups position themselves as the alternative and as disruptors of the status quo. Political scientist Jan-Erik Grindheim states that these groups are not necessarily formulating policies in order to gain votes, but rather tapping into preconceived vulnerabilities as a matter of mobilizing the masses he suggests that these groups are possibly just at the right place, at the right time. Paul Sandrin suggests that it's important to consider the political and cultural context that have led to the popularity of these groups, rather than merely framing them as the unreasonable, the radical and the evil because it is precisely such rhetoric of polarization that has led to their growing success. 